call the meeting we to order. Please to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. 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 Uh, first, like to have the committee offer a moment of silence or hold a moment of silence for the, for Danvers actually, for the teacher that was murdered and the student and all the students there, offer our sympathies to the family and the whole community. Thank you. First, we'll announce this meeting is being recorded by Saugus Cable Television. And if anyone else is recording the meeting, would you please announce it at this time? I'm not recording it, but <laughs> recording it. No, that's okay. okay. As long as <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> is there any public comment this evening? Seeing none, we'll go to student representative report. Hi. Samantha Delaney, I'm the class representative for the class of 2015, and um, just here to talk about some of the fundraising we did. Um, this past September, we did Founders Day, which we had two tables. We had Hilltop as a food table, and then we also had a game table where we had a game and we sold sunglasses and class t-shirts. Um, then this past month, we also participated in Kowloon Night, which was a fundraiser for all the classes. And this past weekend, we went to the Rivier Flea Market, and we had a booth there, which was very successful. And right now, we're just planning our junior prom that's coming up this January. And we also had a question for you. Um, we I think it's a rule that we're not allowed to do raffles. Is that? No, that's not. That's a not rule. a rule. No. Oh, no, I there's certain is guidelines. There is there's that a guideline? There's guidelines, and there's a. Um, Guidelines are not set by the school department. They're not? No. They're set by the town clerk's office. Mm -hmm. So if your student group would like to do uh, a raffle, then I suggest you simply, um, someone simply go up to town hall mm -hmm. and ask them how okay. to do it. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next, we do have approval of minutes. We have the open session of October 10th, 2013. Madam Chair? Mr. Doucette. Uh, I make a motion to approve the minutes of October 10th, 2013. Mr. Chair will second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. And we have the executive session minutes uh, dated February 2011 through June 2013. Madam Chair? Ms. Riley? Make a motion to accept the ex uh, executive minutes dated from 2 9 2011 to June 27, 2013. And the chair will second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes <coughs> unanimously. We do have a few other minutes still on the table, and pretty soon those will be wrapped up. Next, we do have voting of the warrants. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Is there anything you'd like to highlight here? Uh, yes. The warrant you see before you um, includes the first installment payment for our annual busing contract, as well as out-of-district tuition, um, other expenses for the normal operating of a school district, as well as you will see uh, electricity costs beginning to spike now that it's September and everyone's back in school. That's about it. Do you have any questions? I have, oh, I have a Mr. question um, in regards to the comment you made about the electricity. Have we uh, straightened out our problems with the gas at the high school? Are we, where do we stand with uh, that? As, as far as I know, mm -hmm. yes, it is. Um, National, National Grid has been made aware of it. Um, I do know that they are replacing meters at some of our schools. Um, other than that, 
and you know, Santa Buckley to give us the credit due to the meter problem. So the issue did not lie with Santa Buckley per se. Madam Chair? <coughs> Is there any other questions before Ms. Riley? Make a motion to ex approve the warrants dated October 24th, 2013, prepared by Bola Andrews, Executive Director of Finance and Operations, with a total of $204,746.41. And the chair will second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. We do have the financial report. Ms. Yes, Andrews. Thank you. As of September 30th, 2013, the Saugus Public Schools has expended and encumbered $4,290,865 against the appropriation. Um, now that school has opened its doors and all the staff has um, pretty much been hired and set in place and our needs have been identified, I've spent the time since our last meeting uh, aligning the budget and you will see before you budget entry number three which is quite lengthy the first page corrects five salary line items due to late hires and it allocates the recent paraprofessional contract increases to the applicable line items the second page applies increases for column movements to the applicable line item due to the fact that some of the um, movements were for positions charged to all day kindergarten and the preschool revolving fund it freed up some funds which I would uh, request to apply for shortfalls in title 2a and title 1 salary funding so the amounts for those the shortfall amounts were approximately 18,000 for title 2a and 23,500 for Title I. The third page begins with the request to apply turnover savings to a salary line item. Oh, um, I'm sorry. It was the Title I, which was moved to the second page. The third page um, is a request for a budget transfer to support the purchase of Mandarin textbooks and additional biology books at Saugus High, funds the purchase of drying tables at the Belmonte, and transfers funding from the Belmonte math supply line item to the computer hardware line item in order to purchase 20 Epson Brightlinks so that every classroom at Belmonte School will now have a smart board. There is also an additional request <coughs> to transfer funds from the Belmonte Middle School Math Supply line item to fund Discovery Ed for the elementary K through two grades to support science education. The science program was very successful with the older elementary students last year, as you remember. Um, would you like me to read the budget transfers for the requests? To read them out? Or does it suffice? Okay. Um, there was also a request last month to uh, notify the committee of the outstanding carryovers from FY13. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to report there's only one invoice outstanding as of today, and it is for $949. Can I answer any questions? We still don't have the product or this that that was to pay for. What's the 949 for? Uh, no, I don't believe we have the product, and the invoice is outstanding. It's just getting later in the year, you know. Okay. It's getting later now. It is. I'm, I'm sure it'll be resolved. I mean, sometimes you know, you wait till the opening of school. Maybe they had a change in, yeah. in what they chose, and they're waiting for it. Okay. Committee, have any questions? motion. Madam Chair? Yes, should you set. Make a motion to approve <coughs> financial budget entry number three. Um, oh, oh, oh. Okay. We need to reference the um, 
the document unless you want to read the whole thing. It's budget entry number three. Did I miss something? No, no, that would be in your in your database. That this will for this document is forever classified as budget entry number three, correct? That's correct. So that isn't that is the actual document name. That is. Okay, we'll you second. Say submitted to us on today's it's date. Yeah, it's typically dated in. Um, but that's fine. I can say we can to date it state. when we sign it. Sure. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And we could sign the document now. So. <coughs> Thank you. Did you want to um, mention the food service report or? Yes, the food service report is included in your packet. It, uh, um, it did arrive late this month and mm -hmm. with an apology accompanied to it. Um, there has been an increase in sales for lunch, particularly at the high school, so that is, um, that is good to see. And <coughs> there's been a small increase in breakfast sales at one of the elementary schools and a slight increase at the others. Food service director is working um, to, to continuously tweak the menu to offer products that you know the students would like to see and would like to purchase. What about the staff? It, it doesn't seem like many adult lunches yeah, are, are are sold, and I'm curious as, if there's any way they can address or tweak the menu for. Um, they did have the food service survey last year. Mm -hmm. I, I believe there was a request for salads. Yep. And I think one of the things that I've already heard is despite the fact that they've gone back to the old system where they had, you know, one salad for the whole every day that everyone would know was on the menu, mm -hmm. it, it really hasn't done well. Hmm. They said sales have not been good for those products. My, my question uh, in the same line, is you've only sold we've only sold for the month fifty nine dollars and fifty five cents worth of adult lunch throughout the whole district. How much is is adult lunch and, and does it vary from school to school? Or is it all the same price? Uh, I don't have that information in front of me. It's the same price. It, uh, yeah, I think it's the set price. I thought it was. I mean, that about can't be more than. Mark. I think it's three dollars and change, three fifty. It's just a little like 50 cents more than what the regular lunch is. So three dollars. Um, something like ten. that. Uh, Mr. Kowalski. Yeah. Um, I apologize, but I'm seeing um, when you look at the combined all buildings yeah. on the on page seven of seven. Yeah. Okay. If you look almost on the top, yeah. it says adults lunch 271 lunches, 964 dollars. Mm -hmm. But yeah. if you look at what's the prepaid revenue prepaid. summary? That means they're paying online. Oh, okay. All right. I just so expected it was going to pick up after the survey. I, I did. It, it. Well, it did. Really, right? It did. It did. The lunches have picked up. I mean, there's. Oh, I meant the. the yeah, there's the a adult steady lunches. increase. Oh. Uh, and again, I did not. You know, I received this um, late yesterday afternoon. I didn't have time to review it. I would also like to mention to the community. Um, to the committee that I did have the opportunity to spend um, the entire today, day today at Town Hall working on MUNIS and building the chart of accounts and I'm um, very excited to be there and to begin the process. Well, a lot of people excited about it. I am very excited. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Now that's rolling out in phases from what I understand and I don't know much about the MUNIS but I know they, they had said that it's going to roll out in phases so financials first and then that's correct that's correct so how long do you think before the whole system will be up uh, it, we're hoping for it to be online by July 1st and I'm not sure um, they're going to run two systems at once and I I'm not really clear on the timetable for that I think time will tell as we get further into the project and we'll have training to go along with absolutely. that absolutely yeah. very good I have one other question Mr. under the prepaid revenue summary yes 
charges credit extended three thousand eight hundred sixty nine dollars that's correct um, part of that is <coughs> because of the free and reduced applications mm -hmm. uh, the timing of them getting um, families recertified and re-verified so you're going to see that come down at some point the food service director will come back with the real number of um, obligations because of the way the timing you know pa families who no longer qualify but yet received free free meals in September she'll come back with the real number and ask the committee if they want to absolve it or how they want to approach that I believe last year was around five hundred dollars so you don't have a figure right now of what has not been paid uh, because, no, because that's because in this flux is it has to wait this okay. is September, so that's something we've been working on. And um, I must say that I personally appreciate that the committee voted to increase the salary for that position. Um, the person in that position has been doing a wonderful job and been very diligent going through all the applications. And uh, I believe it's going to make a tremendous difference. One other question, just procedurally. Is there any way that this report can be... <coughs> I apologize. Um, uh, M Mrs. McNeil and I have been through it. Lengthwise and instead of widthwise. It just, it will not turn. It's not landscape. No, I understand. It will not turn. If I go like this, I can read it. <laughs> as soon as we come to the financial report, the whole committee goes. <laughs> <laughs> Technology, a wonderful thing. We were not okay. able to turn the food service report or the budget entry. I just can't do it. Because their landscape, we can't. We tried. She, I, I, I personally haven't tried. Mrs. Min, Mrs. McNeil has tried because she sets it up for the school yeah. committee packet, and she has not been able to do so. <laughs> I'd be happy to provide paper copies if you want to go back to that. <laughs> and the food service report alone, or even the cover page, perhaps. Well, if, if committee members need uh, paper copies, they can always come in or, or give a call for that. It's not necessary for every financial document. Thank you. And we can put it up on the big screen. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Next we do have, let's see, superintendent's report. Sure. And, uh, <coughs> the what I have for the uh, the weekly highlight I have uh, again gone to the Oakland Vale Ele Elementary School and I know that I haven't uh, already doubling up one school but I think it's with uh, good reason and um, I was very impressed with the uh, fear the beard uh, campaign and uh, Miss Sabowski's class of her students again continuing with their uh, uh, the concept of, of teamwork uh, throughout the class and throughout the Oak um, but they, they, what they did was it was really impressive. They created a scrapbook of how they use teamwork uh, in, uh, in support of, of, uh, of the Red Sox as they go into the World Series. Uh, they, they created beards uh, themselves, and there's a, cl a very cute uh, class picture of, of the entire class uh, with their fear of the beard sign. And they, they, uh, the life-size David Ortiz uh, cut out in the room also was adorned with, uh, with some facial hair as well. <laughs> And uh, it seems to be working so far, okay, in, in game one, and we hope that we'll continue with game two, so uh, later tonight, this evening. So next item I have is I, I was very impressed with uh, my first uh, uh, trivia night at, at the Kowloons. What, a, what an event. It was the, uh, the best school fundraiser I've ever been a part of. Uh, everyone uh, had a great time. The team varsity from Saugus High School took home the bragging rights for the year. Uh, with the trophy and uh, I think the true winners were uh, ultimately the schools but the SBEC uh, with with their teamwork and bringing the community together uh, Mr. Smolinski again did a, a fantastic job with that uh, they raised over uh, uh, seven thousand three hundred and fifty five dollars uh, that they intend to uh, give back to the to the schools to help offset programs and we we are very thankful for that um, what was also came out of that too is some initial conversations already with some of the members of the group uh, and 
uh, meeting uh, to potentially have a spring <coughs> sports trivia uh, contest. Mr. And uh, Mr. O'Leary and Mr. Hashem are working with the SBEC on that. And uh, actually, we may have a team, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mo uh, Mr. Mullen. Uh, so, uh, but but basically, what what was suggested, which I thought was a wonderful idea, and actually, uh, Mr. Warren yeah. himself, I had a conversation with him about this, about uh, targeting an offset for the for the athletic fees for students. Uh, everything raised in that night targeted for that one purpose. I know that has come up uh, uh, from the committee, uh, and it's certainly something that we would. Would support obviously uh, gifted towards that effort, and it's a it's again a great community effort. Uh, so uh, our, our hats off to that. I attended the uh, North Shore Superintendent uh, Superintendent's uh, roundtable uh, last week, and also my first uh, ever live uh, department is elementary and secondary education board meeting, mm -hmm. which was uh, which was pretty fascinating. Uh, we're, we're so uh, so very close to that. Uh, superintendents from around the Commonwealth uh, were in, invited to attend, and they uh, discussed kind of um, uh, the park assessment and where that is going, and district determined measures. And it was really interesting uh, observing that process. And um, it, it, things are things are uh, going well with that. Uh, the, it was interesting also to see the uh, very much <coughs> uh, the, the department's board meeting is very much like a, a regular uh, board meeting as, as uh, you folks run. Only some some of the topics were it, it was really intriguing to see uh, people from uh, there were one in particular. They were talking about some of the frame content in, within the frameworks. And different people were presenting on what what they felt might want to be in uh, in the frameworks and not. It was just an interesting process. Um, my last item that I have is a, a focus uh, area. It came up in a recent uh, meeting requesting looking into the vans and transportation, and uh, we are starting uh, that that process. And as as we're digging into those contracts and looking at um, uh, with Miss um, uh, Andrews and and um, uh, looking at, at uh, different documents and, and funding for those documents and what we're trying to do is take apart the entire uh, budget and look at, at how we spend uh, for the three um, uh, major areas of the transportation budget and the policies that affect those because there is a correlation there. Uh, we, we are going to maintain the same policies uh, that we have in the past and not, not change those until we know uh, what is more cost effective uh, and, and with that in mind we don't know um, we want to make sure if we're targeting to use vans more or less basically what what makes the most sense and I think right now um, at, a, at a curse review it looks like we want to expand the usage of the vans uh, for the cost effective and the biggest variable there being <coughs> the, excuse me the new athletic league and looking at the, at the contract and that and we only have one season so far uh, but we're going to project the next seasons with those actuals to those loca locations. So, uh, Mr. O'Leary is in the process of breaking that down as we speak. <coughs> Excuse me. But that that is all I have. Do you have any questions? <coughs> Just a question on the. Uh, I know we talked about it at the last committee meeting, but. Uh, with the use of the vans and such, to my understanding, no vans have been used this current school year for athletic events. And I know you're going to work on it, but to me, that's kind of uh, time sensitive. We don't want to go further on into the season without using those vans. I don't understand why they haven't been utilized so far this year when they have in the past. But I know you're going to look into it, and hopefully we'll get that squared away. I, I think some have been used. I don't think they're being used as often. And what I don't know uh, offhand is if it's if it's a factor of the new league or, or what what the situation is on that. But I will get that information for you. Thank I you. you. I was going to think what team would use them by right now, but probably the golf team. Mm -hmm. yeah. Golf yeah. uses <coughs> golf, tennis, and I'm the smaller to think of what. teams. <coughs> yeah, but yeah, there is a false. Point. Any other questions? Well, thank you. On to the report of Executive Director of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment. Mr. Bruno? Yeah, we, um, uh, our first 
Uh, the first is our first uh, deadline for the new teacher evaluations coming up on November 1st. So um, all educators, administrators included, are finalizing their SMART goals. So uh, as we've mentioned before, all educators across the district set one um, measurable goal related to student learning and a second related to their own um, professional practice. So evaluators and uh, um, teachers have been meeting to finalize these and, and uh, once those are complete um, and outlined action plans on the steps they're going to take to achieve uh, and work towards their goals, um, that document becomes uh, their educator plan for, for the year uh, and all of those are going to be um, signed off on and, and made official by the end of this month, so by November 1st. Um, <coughs> We have had our first program leader meeting, so all program leaders, uh, we have a total of 12 across the uh, uh, 6 through 12, have been chosen. Um, we've got a, a great group of, of uh, teachers who are already informal leaders in their respective buildings, so I think um, we're going to have a great team with our program leaders on board and really help with uh, the efforts to, to continue to work on common assessments and identify district determined measures, which um, is is part of the new teacher evaluation system as we go forward um, so we're really excited about that to have our team complete and ready to go um, some uh, classroom technology uh, um, this week I had my uh, first meeting actually I was I was asked to be a part of um, the advisory board for discovery education which is the company that puts out uh, the science tech book um, so the opportunity to, to have our first in-person meeting as part of that advisory board, they're developing a math tech book um, to start at the middle school and high school levels. So the, the, they have a prototype underway, uh, which, which I had the opportunity to kind of preview and, and take a look at. And um, it's really innovative. It, it looks like a fantastic uh, digital product uh, with a similar format to the science tech book, but for, but for math. So we're I'm excited to be a part of that. It's, it's, it's a great opportunity um, and also could potentially be a great uh, product for us down the road when it's completed. So um, Discovery Education continues to, to, to put out some really innovative um, products for, for a curriculum that we're excited about. Uh, and as the superintendent, or I, I'm sorry, as, as, um, as Andrews mentioned, we're looking, uh, we're expanding the science tech book down to kindergarten through second grade. So the, uh, the teachers um, have already started piloting. Uh, they were able to, they've, they've turned it on for us to uh, the last month or so for teachers to use actively. Um, so we're excited to, to take what's already been done in three, four, and five and move it down to K1 and two to really have, um, you know, for the first time a comprehensive elementary uh, mm -hmm. science curriculum, which, which the teachers uh, and Mr. Woods obviously is very excited about. And, and although his title is 6 through 12, he does uh, a tremendous amount of work with, with the elementary staff, which is very much appreciated by me, uh, certainly, and, and the teachers as well. So uh, we're excited about that. Um, we just uh, uh, returned from MassQ at uh, Gillette Stadium, many of us, uh, to kind of preview a lot of, a lot of the, the latest and greatest um, and identify uh, uh, and, and make connections about where we're going to go from here with technology. So we're excited to meet and, and establish uh, some goals going forward in that way. Uh, and then finally, November 5th is coming up, our professional day. We have, I want to say, at least 12 teachers who are going to be facilitating and sharing uh, best practice seminars with teachers. So we're tapping into our own internal expertise. Um, teachers will have the opportunity to sign up for two seminars um, of their choice uh, that, that will be facilitated by their colleagues. Uh, so they're very excited about it. We're excited about it. We had a, a great response uh, when we put out uh, for teachers to, to a lot of it is technology related, classroom instruction related, student support related. Uh, so I think it's going to be a great day. Uh, we also have um, atomic learning, which is, which is going to be available to all staff and parents and kids, um, which, is, which is an online tutorial for anything technology related. So if you want to learn how to, how to create a spreadsheet or you want to learn how to uh, use a Google Drive, for example, there's step-by-step -step instructions online that you can follow that we now have access to. And, um, you know, our technology uh, director is really, really excited about that. So we're going to be presenting that as well on the professional day, uh, as well as some discovery education trainers coming back to continue to 
uh, work with teachers on, on the science tech book. Um, so we're excited about the fifth, and uh, that's, that's about it for me. Well, we should say congratulations to those teachers that will be running the seminars and the programs with the other teachers because I think that's wonderful when they come back and teachers teach teachers is sharing best practices, you like to say. That's right, and that's, that's really uh, the, the best way to spread, spread great ideas. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and we have some teachers that are doing some really innovative things in their classrooms um, and there's going to be, uh, you know, there's the, the response from teachers when I put out the survey as to the, the different uh, ones that are, were going to be offered was really positive and we had over 200 mm -hmm. teachers, um, you know, resp respond and sign up for, for one of the, um, you know, one of our seminars, so it's, it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I just want to comment that I'm thrilled over the science because it, it's been so fragmented over the years. It's nice that we will have a continuum with that. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're very excited about <coughs> it. Excellent. Committee, have any questions? No. Thank you. <coughs> That's my place. We do have report of subcommittees. Mr. Doucette, we have a report from policy subcommittee. Yeah, Madam Chair, uh, policy subcommittee meeting let, uh, policy subcommittee met last Thursday. Um, <coughs> to finalize uh, to, uh, a couple of policies um, before we get to the social networking policy um, I mean the policy FF naming policy social networking policy um, came up for discussion <coughs> and the superintendent has a copy of it and he's going to share it with all the building principals and uh, put it up on the web uh, in, the, in the policies under consideration um, space so that they can have opportunity for public input and input from the, the school community members um, it's a really long policy. I didn't want to say it's mm -hmm. eight or nine pages long, um, really detailed. And um, so we, uh, we want to get as much input as we can to make sure that it's not going to really impact negatively <coughs> the operations of the schools. Um, and so we want to make sure we do it right. Um, general policy issues, we discussed some issues regarding student handbooks, but I think we're all good to go with that. And the last policy we discussed, was the first policy we discussed, but the last one I want to talk, was policy FF, which was the naming of uh, school buildings, which we talked about at the last meeting, and went back to the policy subcommittee for a uh, for a read. Um, so we made some changes uh, based upon input from the public and based upon uh, input from the um, from the committee. <coughs> and uh, what you have in front of you is a new copy of um, of policy FF as it will uh, appear should it be approved by uh, the school committee. It was uh, approved unanimously by the subcommittee with the language in it, as you see in front of you. So, with your permission, I will read policy <laughs> FF for the last time. The last time? Uh, well, hopefully we're not going to change policy FF in the next two weeks. Um, <laughs> policy, uh, file FF, naming of new facilities. Naming a school facility or part thereof is an important matter that deserves thoughtful attention. Personal prejudice or favoritism or temporary popularity should not be an influence in choosing a school name. A name with educational significance or inspiration should be chosen, or one based upon physical location. The committee also feels it is appropriate to choose a name that will lend dignity and stature to the school, and that parts of facilities should only be named for individuals in cases of extraordinary lifetime achievement or extraordinary circumstances. Upon petition to name a part of a facility after an individual, the school committee shall create a subcommittee to review the petition and make recommendations. In order to recognize all those who have contributed, the committee will establish a plaque or tree of honored names, contributor slash contributors, in each new facility or pot thereof. Anyone believing a person fits the criteria to have his slash her name placed on the plaque may submit said name for qualification and on approval purchase a place. Mm -hmm. The monies derived from this endeavor shall be used for the needs of the facility. Note, the naming of a school building lies with the town and not with the school committee. This policy shall apply only to those areas within the building that falls under the committee's jurisdiction and shall not apply to previously, na previous, to previously names and places. I think that's supposed to say named places. So what the policy added back in specifically was um, based on physical location. Uh, based upon physical location, we had a discussion with like Lindhurst right. School and, and Ballard School. We Oakland wanted to put the Oakland right. Vale, wanted to put that language back in. Um, and then we specific from the from the first read, we added the words um, extraordinary lifetime achievement, mm -hmm. in addition to extraordinary circumstances. I like that. 
And as I said, it was uh, voted unanimously by the by the subcommittee. <coughs> I won't make a motion until you have an opportunity to discuss it, if you should choose to, because it closes discussion. Committee, any discussion? That sounds good. Sounds good to me. Madam Chair. Mr. Doucette. I make a motion to approve uh, file FF as read. The chair will second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion passes. Is there any other reports of subcommittees? No. Seeing none, we'll go to old business. We had a request for school committee meeting schedule. Um, originally, uh, well, it's just traditional that the week of an election, uh, the school committee holds its organizational meeting on the Thursday after the election, and there may be a request to leave it up to the new sitting members correct no since the meeting is already scheduled I'd like to change it because there's a possibility that uh, several members won't be here if they're re-elected yeah and I don't think the superintendent will be here that night either so I don't think it's proper to conduct an organizational meeting with possibly only three members present I think the organizational needs all five members present as well as a superintendent. Well, but then rather than us picking a date, we should just leave it open to um, after the election to schedule the organizational meeting. Well, well, how are you going to do that? Swearing in on Wednesday? Swearing in on, is on, on Wednesday. On Wednesday and come over. You guys can swear in on Wednesday and come right over here and do it. Excuse me, Madam Chair. I'll be out of town. Uh, I'm leaving on vacation Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday morning. Sorry. And I'm just, <laughs> I'm just anticipating the fact yeah. that several and members might not be here, depending on the outcome of the election. So. so we should just leave it up to. But how would you do that? The new board that is. The superintendent's now. office will contact all the members <coughs> and. Uh, following Thursday. There's a punt. Right. You have to do it the following Thursday, because the superintendent acts as the chair of the committee. Right. For the establishment of this, so he, if he's not here, we can't have. Well, not we. You guys can't have a meeting. So uh, right now we have that Thursday scheduled. Do you want to just leave it, or do you want to um, cancel that particular Thursday and leave it up to um, whatever happens after the election to schedule for an organizational meeting? Oh, Madam Chair, I think you could leave that Thursday. That would be the 14th, right? That would yeah. be a normal. That would be a normal meeting. So we could have the organization is just a quick thing anyway. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the Thursday after. So we so we want to cancel. 14th. It's not scheduled for the sixth. Seventh. Seventh. No, we have one yeah, scheduled for the. Why well, won't be here? I, I, I don't I mean, have it. On yeah, the we do. That's, 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 so. that's historical. It's always the Thursday after the election. Okay. But since you're not going to be here, and depending on the election results. Other people won't be here. I don't think it's proper that we don't have a full sitting five members and the superintendent here. So I make a motion to um, cancel, the, cancel the organizational meeting on November 7th. And the chair will second. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. So I'll just ask the superintendent that after the election, if your office could contact whoever the members are to set a date for organizational meeting. That that next week before the regularly scheduled meeting. Okay. Or yeah. on the day of. Or on the day of. Okay. Yeah, Madam, Madam Chair, be because the um, the organizational meeting was usually established just as an organizational meeting. Mm -hmm. Now you have a organizational meeting on the night of a business meeting. So the superintendent's going to be relied upon to form the entire agenda himself, as well as just just FYI, because uh, there's going to be no chairperson to assist you in forming the agenda, and there can't be an executive session meeting before, like we currently do. You have to be afterwards if you need one. Well, I don't. I don't foresee that there'll be any real issue anyway. No problem. He can always call you for assistance. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Changing the phone number. <laughs> 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 
taking my iPad back. Now you can't get in contact with it. <laughs> okay. Is it, there's no other old business, correct? So we have new business. We have a recommendation for homeschool programs. That's the superintendent. Yes. I have uh, one student, a <coughs> uh, first uh, first grader uh, at the Oaklandville uh, school they submitted and uh, was was approved. It meets all the criteria to your satisfaction? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Committee, have any questions? I hear a motion. Madam Chair. Mr. Doucette. Make a motion to approve the home school program. As recommended by the As recommended by the superintendent. And the chair will second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. There are no gifts this evening, correct? No. no. And last under new business is MOU regarding the past coaching positions. And if the superintendent wants to. Sure. I don't. Um, there, there, these were the same uh, positions from the previous year. Um, and uh, I believe there were three, um, two middle school positions in the okay. volleyball position. I don't have the document. But they're not in here, right? Yeah, we didn't no. get a copy of oh. the document either. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> Okay. That's me. <laughs> I thought you. I, th I <laughs> thought it was included in the. I thought it was too, till I just looked like a minute ago. <laughs> so can we um, put this off for the next? Sure. Regularly so scheduled meeting. Is it? I mean, is it that complicated? Can no, it, they're, they're the same positions that were budgeted at the same levels. We did check into that at first. We didn't know. We checked. I had the historicals pulled, and mm -hmm. and uh, the same positions were were funded the, <coughs> the previous year. They just were not. Included and carried over, they just got uh, missed in the documentation of the. So we're we're um, <coughs> drafting a new MOU, and you have that. Yeah, I have it. Do I you have it tonight. I I can get it. I probably. I'm just asking because, and not that this is really time sensitive, but um, it's my understanding that coaches have already um, not been paid. Yeah. Because this is holding it up, and I don't think that that's really fair if. If the committee feels comfortable to, I mean, these this is nothing new. Five minute recess, so we can go get them. Do you have them on your sure. desk? Yes, they should Madam be. Madam Chair, making a motion for a five minute recess so the superintendent can ask documents. Just, just a question. In terms of the budget that we have for the athletic department, are these wages already included in that? Yeah, they're already in the budget. They should have been included in the budget. It's just the MOU wasn't carried over as it. Expired. <coughs> so, you want to recess? Yes, yeah, so we can. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Just a two-minute recess. Yeah. Call it back to order. Say thank you to the superintendent. We have the document here. Uh, this is from the original MOU that was a um, few years ago. So we just need to, as you can see, the volleyball in the middle school positions. Right? Not sure. There's no, there's no increases <coughs> in these, right? No. These are the same that have been in the past? Yep. Yeah, yes, they are. Not sure. Mr. Doucette. Make a motion to approve the side letter of understanding between the Saugus Educated Association and the School Committee um, regarding um, coaching stipends. <coughs> and the chair will second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And we'll just have that typo fixed. And Absolutely. We'll, I'll uh, come over and sign it when it's ready. Is there any other new business this evening? Nope. Madam Chair. Mr. Doucette. I just want to take an opportunity because it's my last meeting to, to thank everybody. Um, my family, my wife, who, um, who let me do this crazy thing. Uh, <laughs> thank my fellow committee members. Uh, we, we, we fight, we argue, um, but, uh, but it's, it's been a good two years. Um, all the supporters, everybody voted for me, put signs, put my stupid sign on their lawn, and um, it was great. Duke. No, don't Duke. Forget Duke. Don't forget, I know he watches. Um, and just I wanted to say to everybody who's running, good luck. Um, and uh, if I could give one piece of advice, um, God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason, so you'd listen twice as much as you talk. 
So, uh, thank you. Thank you, and thank you for your service. Any other business this evening? Well, Madam Chair, we don't want to get too overconfident. And eight to win one last, eight to one win last night. Remember those 1960 Pittsburgh Pirates, the ghost of Roberto Clemente, Dick Rote, and Dick Stewart. They lost World Series games by the scores of 18 to four, 12 to nothing, and 10 to two, but still won four one-run games, culminating in Bell Mazeroski's walk-off home run in the ninth inning of Game Seven. So our prayers should go to Jake Peavy, Clay Buckles, John Lackey, John Lester, Koji, and the rest of them. Motion to adjourn. Just seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Both meeting adjourned. Thank you.